I've been working on this helmet uh, using some HD stencils and since I have to do the other side and it will be uh, sort of mirrored from what I've done on this side I thought I'm gonna show you the process on how I go about uh, doing that the trickiest part will be to work you know on the on a round surface uh, it's it's a bit a bit hard to keep the stencils in place, uh, but then you're gonna see that it, it's you know to to build up a background is a lot easier to use only parts of the stencil and move it around and then little by little create a cohesive piece you know um, especially because it's a round helmet uh, you know a round surface like I said so. Um, that is the biggest challenge in this painting. Uh, the, for me, it's been the, the biggest challenge. And um, the coloring is very simple. I'm pretty much uh, using a dark color for the positive stencils I'm using. And then I'm adding color afterwards. Uh, that is really easy. I'm just doing a bit of masking, but it's all pretty simple. Um, colors I'm using are illustration colors. Uh, mixing them with some um, Intercut Clear 4030 uh, that will, you know, make them a lot more stronger for, uh, you know, to do taping techniques, uh, you know, masking techniques and, and all that stuff. So to get started, um, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get going with the stencil for this picture. Uh, this is the reference picture that can be found in the website. So you can download it for free. Uh, I'm gonna use it to look at the colors. Uh, it will make it a lot easier than just trying to do it out of imagination. So for taping the stencil, uh, I'm using clear tape. There you're going to see that I'm spraying the stencil very quickly, but in reality, at real time, when I did it, uh, I took a much longer time than this uh, because if you spray too much paint too quickly, you end up flooding the stencil. Uh, it's, it's sort of a puddle of paint between the stencil and the surface. And what it ends up happening is that you have to redo everything. So taking the time is key here. So I'm just checking, see what I got. What I did there uh, was a, a little risky uh, of removing the stencil when I didn't have enough coverage and I did it again uh, because I found that I could place it back in the same place uh, but whenever you're working uh, make sure to practice sometimes in the first try you're not gonna you're not gonna know how to do the stencil properly so do some practicing before. Yeah. So this one, this is better now. I got a lot more contrast. Uh, from here, I'm just gonna add color to each horse and a very small amount of color to the white horse in the middle. So once I, uh, once I have sprayed the stencil and I got enough contrast, um, I go and do the coloring. If, if for some reason you don't have enough coverage and you do the coloring first, uh, you do all, uh, all the colors, and then you find that your, your blacks are still too light, you can always place the stencil back and spray black 
over it. Uh, it doesn't ruin it. However, you're going to need to uh, come back with some color just to blend things together. So in that aspect, they, they are very forgiving. Uh, it just takes time to place the stencil back in place. So one important thing that I'm going to do now is um, now that I have the horses to a point that I like them and I think they will blend properly with the rest of the painting. So one important step you want to take before masking something is uh, to use inner, uh, inner cut clear 4030. Um, I'm gonna spray this before I do any masking. Make sure your airbrush is perfectly clean before you do this because if you have color, you're going to tint everything. So now that the inner coat clear is done, it's all dry, it's been a little while since I sprayed it, uh, I'm gonna use uh, some art tool frisket. I'm gonna cut a piece and just tape cut around all the horses. Uh, whenever you're cutting your frisket, uh, be sure to use a brand new blade and don't cut everything at once. Cut some parts first because if you miss a spot, then you're gonna have problems and you're gonna have to redo it again. This is the reference picture that I have for the background. Um, the, the first design I did here is a size one stencil and this is a size two uh, background stencil uh, for this picture. Uh, this stencil, uh, as you can see, if I try like just like laying it on the helmet uh, I might be able to work to work with it like that, but then you see it's not like a perfect fit. I'm gonna need to work it around. So what I decided to do on the other side before was to only use uh, parts of it and independently move it around and and paint different things separately, and that way it's easier to to create what I'm after and at the same time I also have a bit more freedom in, in how things get placed into the helmet. I got a color for the forest. Um, since the forest is gonna be uh, olive green, it's gonna be very green. Uh, I'm gonna start by tinting my black with, uh, I already did it, but what I did was I added olive green and viridian green to the black. Um, that way I get a really dark green. And now with the background stencil, uh, this is where the, the thought process kind of breaks down and you need to start working smaller pieces of the stencil uh, that is because of the shape of the surface uh, it's really hard to do the whole stencil so be selective with the different parts of the stencil either you either if you're using this stencil or if you're using a different stencil uh, look for parts that kind of match your imagination and and uh, test them out, see what comes out because it's it's pretty much an experiment that you're doing and seeing and observing what is happening. And as you can see, that's what I'm doing there. I'm looking for different trees and different textures. And I work small areas at the time. Uh, sometimes I don't get the results I want. I just keep testing different areas, uh, keep trying, keep spraying. Sometimes 
uh, I spray too less. Sometimes I spray too much and I create puddles in between the stencil. Uh, so that, that's the sort of thing you need to, uh, to try out and discover for yourself. Um, but uh, something I really liked about doing the background was that I could move things around. Uh, some of these trees don't have a it's the other side they only have one side so I also turn the stencil around to create that part uh, to create the second part of the tree I'm and I'm putting more focus where where the focal points are like for like the horses those are focal points I want to do uh, a better job there than in some other places. Uh, here's what I was saying. Uh, I used the same the same tree, but I flipped it around to create the other side. Um, doing that, I was able to create the illusion that is one whole tree, and it's quite amazing because it's it's the same stencil and. Um, you start creating a whole little world in there. Um, to do this project, it took me about six hours. Uh, on and off, I didn't do it in one shot, but uh, it was about six hours. Uh, that's including the clear coat and uh, also preparing it, um, but it did take a lot of time. Uh, I, when I was spraying each area, where you see when I placed the stencil, uh, I didn't just spray it really quick. I, I took the time to build up the color, and every time I spray something, I do a few coats. I, I don't try to cover everything in one pass because that's where everything starts going wrong. So I do a few light passes and until I get the coverage I want. Uh, sometimes I also use the same base color to darken some areas. It's not necessary to do that to do that, but um, I wanted to create a darker, more mysterious sort of forest. And uh, by darkening like that, it also helps uh, with the other color. The color that I spray on top is olive green. It's only been reduced, over reduced, and also I've added transparent base. Uh, so it gives me some time, some time to build the color. And uh, I'm not spraying the color evenly. Uh, I want to leave some light areas. It gives the sensation that there's light coming through the forest, through the fog or something. So those are some nice little things you can uh, you find out while doing that. So we're at this point. At this point, uh, we have two sides of the helmet done. Um, I went ahead and I did some uh, inner cut clear before removing the tape. So this is the first side I already had down. This is what we got now. Um, still is looking incomplete. So now I'll focus into filling up the back and um, then I'm gonna go ahead and work this area up try to make it a, co a cohesive piece and um, but uh, I'm gonna start by removing this tape and see see what I have there
So what I'm going to try doing is to uh, try blending some of these hard edges and uh, make it a little more cohesive. When you remove the masking, you're going to find that sometimes things don't blend quite as good as you expected them. Uh, but it's not that it's not that difficult to fix them. Uh, on these horses, I use the same dark color to blend the legs more into the ground. And um, that was good enough to put things back together. That blends are a bit better. Um, I like that for now. I want to move ahead and do the back here. Tape this. So I got this in place. I'm gonna give it a shot and I'm not worried to make any mistakes right now because I still have the, the white down there. If, if anything, uh, I'm still safe. I can just white it out again and I should be ready to restart it if, if it comes to that. So again, I took a long time to build up this color. Don't be deceived by the speed on the video. Uh, that was sped up by a lot uh, I was also I was doing multiple layers of, of uh, light coats but at the same time you know, the stencil doesn't lay flat um, the center of the stencil laid flat but the sides I had to push them flat um, you want the stencil to be flat to the surface every time you are spraying and uh, it's easier to do that when you do smaller pieces at the time can't wait to see what I got here. I'm sure it's still not good enough, but hopefully it's not too bad. Okay. Definitely need some work here. Um, okay. That's not bad. Really cool. Um, I need some work here and here. Um, I'm gonna be very careful how I put this back. And I'm sort of looking through the stencil. I know it's kind of hard to see that, but it's sort of what I have to do because uh, it doesn't matter if I use the positioning marks on a, on a shape like this, uh, it will uh, distort anyways. So, hmm. let's see how I can look into the stencil, and I think I'm right there. So I need more here too. Okay, that's good there. I want to do here in the neck or chest, whatever that is. I um, want to do a little more. I'm sure I'm going to get some sort of double lines there. Uh, but I really care more about the contrast than the details of that, uh, in that area. So as you can see, even though the stencil gives you like 100% of the thing, of the design, uh, you still got to make a lot of decisions. So 
that's what I got. Let me let me give you sort of a 360 of this. If you notice, uh, there are some areas that the wizard looks really white and there's very little paint there. Uh, the only reason why it looks like that is because it's against white. So whenever you be painting something, if you use these stencils and you see that there are no details there, uh, you need to change the color of the background. You need to change the value of the background. Uh, and remember to to uh, download those pictures, you can go to the website. Those pictures are on the product description. All the, uh, usually they are all the way on the bottom of the description. Um, me, for example, I, I really can't work without reference. It's, I've gotten used to working with reference. So it's very useful to look at the exact colors to work with. And this wizard is pretty simple. It's only uh, four colors, one for the clock, the tunic, and the skin and stuff. So it's only four colors, five colors if you add the board, uh, the boarding. Okay, so at this point, what I'm gonna do now, uh, let's not forget to use the, the inner cut clear to to protect what I've done, and then uh, after doing that. Uh, tape it up, drying it off really good, uh, and then taping it up and working around it. Remember, we are doing the 40-30 and drying it really good. So the masking tape, if there is any glue residue in the, from the masking tape, uh, you can use some wax and grease remover to get rid of it. If you don't have something as strong as 4030, you you have the chance of cleaning the paint right off. So that's why it's really important to have that barrier there. And then it's back again at cutting the masking. Like I said before, uh, the best and easiest way is to have a brand new blade makes it a lot a lot easier and a lot faster to work with and after doing the main subject it's pretty much the same pretty much repeating what I did on the other side but um, I'm not I'm not only I'm not just uh, spraying blindly I'm I'm trying to to work parts of the stencil uh, to bring things together especially behind that tree uh, it's important that the perspective lo looks right and to create the landscape i'm going off my mind i'm not going off the stencil uh, that is an important thing to to, to tell you uh, you use the stencil to to bring your imagination to life you know to to make it a reality uh, but then i have sort of an idea how the landscape should look and it not, it not always matches my my imagination but I try to follow some sort of uh, idea if you just shoot the stencil around and and you don't have a plan then things could look weird uh, for this for this forest this stencil worked good um, I'm sure for some other textures there are going to be some other uh, background stencils uh, as you can see when I do the first color things kind of don't match uh, the color looks off but it's at the end when things come together when I add the transparent green And um, at this point, the stencil was getting very wet. I had been using it a lot. So 
it was time to uh, wash it although I didn't do it but it's a good idea if you're using a stencil constantly like that it, it will have a lot of paint um, so it's a good idea to wash it so you don't make mistakes um, I'm darkening different parts of the this section and adding more color as well trying to bind everything together make it look similar to the rest of the of the helmet and before removing the masking I do the 4030 uh, I'm gonna start removing this this masking tape and uh, to find out what we got There we go. It's looking good so far. Hopefully it still looks good once I remove it. That is looking really good so far. Uh -huh. That is impressive. <laughs> Holy cow. I'm really impressed by how this is coming out. Wow. That is amazing. So far, it looks really good. I'm uh, really impressed the kind of things you do with this stuff when, once you uh, take it seriously and put, put some time into it. So far I'm loving this. <laughs> then the only thing left to do is uh, to complete the empty areas the main focal points are on the sides and in the back. Uh, that's why I'm not being too worried about the front or the middle. The middle is going to have some ghosting uh, with the girl's name. But all of this is still the same, same process. Finding areas that... Uh, that look good, areas that I want to add into that place and after working with the stencil for so long uh, you, you end up having favorite parts you start discovering the good parts so that's pretty much what I'm doing there and um, I didn't wash the stencil so it has a lot of wet paint and that was causing me problems uh, but I didn't wash it anyways <laughs> uh, so being the forest being that is messy I didn't really care about any mistakes I will just sort of dab the paint with my finger and erase it will just create more texture so for that it blended good it wouldn't work for uh, for everything uh, but for something so messy like that and chaotic like a forest it worked it wasn't a problem it's uh, really hard to blend things together when you have a round object like that so um, I was just filling in with some branches that completed the the front and the middle. On the front there was a medium tree. Wow. 
which was the focal point for the front. Um, now, before I add the green color, I did the the decal, the masking, and by having that difference of color, I have a color ghosting. In a minute, you'll see it. Uh, once we have the helmet on the sun, it looks. Uh, it's a bit easier to see the ghosting, uh, but it was meant to be very subtle. So there it is, uh, it's completed. This point is just about finding areas that need a little more work. So it only took uh, three stencils to create something this complex. Um, one thing I should say is uh, I was using small stencils. As a bigger stencil will be really hard to handle on a shape like that. So be mindful of that. So here is the helmet after being clear cut. Uh, I'm showing you in bright sunlight compared to uh, the video lighting. Uh, this light shows you everything a lot brighter, a lot more like the real thing. So. Uh, That's the final result. It was a good experience uh, doing this project. I hope you like it and uh, that it has inspired you. And there are more stencils at multi-layer stencils.com that you can check out. Uh, thank you very much for watching.